So we're approaching the finish of the hell ride, and Tommy, you were just saying something before about if I want to win an A-grade criterium, something's great practice. What's that? Alright, so I'm at Omara Cycles Cafe and I'm waiting for a local legend of the Criterium scene, Tommy Nankervis. Many of my subscribers will know that I'm, I've got a, a goal. End of this year, I really want to win an A-grade Criterium. So today, Tommy has agreed to go for a little ride together and he's going to share with me some tips on particularly training, what I should be doing leading into the Criterium season and I'm hoping later in the year, when we start hitting the crits, he's gonna share some race tactics with us. I should also probably mention that Tommy, so last season I think he won about 15 A-grade criteriums, which is pretty unbelievable in itself. The season before, he won 25 A-grade criteriums in one season, and I don't care how good a sprinter you are, that's quite unbelievable. At Bike Chase, we actually applied for a Guinness World Record. They denied us because it's an amateur event, but uh, yeah, here he comes right now. <laughs> How are you, mate? All right, you good? Before we go for a ride. Yeah, so Tommy supports the Melbourne Demons, and for those of you who aren't from Australia, the Melbourne Demons are an AFL side, and they haven't made the finals in 12 years, so it's been misery for their supporters. And Tommy is a very passionate Demon supporter. So, mate, tell me, you made the finals. Where were you on the on was it Sunday? What happened? How'd I was just saying, I, we were watching it, Mum. And, usually, I watch on my own because I get to. Uh, Edgy. Wound up, yeah. and we were at mum and dad's and I was screaming my head off and going to smash their TV. Well, when they, you were down. They lost the lead with six minutes to go. I know. And mum wouldn't, we hadn't seen, mum and dad had been away for six weeks or something and they were back and all she was doing was yelling at me to stop being so loud. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even say hello, just walked glued to the TV. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Yeah, yeah sure. So we're approaching the finish of the hell ride and Tommy, you were just saying something before about if I want to win an A-grade criterium, something's great practice. What's that? Yeah, well they have a sprint finish just coming into Black Rock here. We're just on the way out of Rickett's Point. But being a, a race simulation training ride and being able to contest a finish, like, oh, you get to practice it, as a, as a, it's like a bonus race finish every week. And if you can't work out how to get to the front end of this, you're not going to be able to, to do it in an A grade crit. finish, you're not going to be able to do it at the end of an A grade crit race. Yeah, right, interesting. So, we're very lucky here in Melbourne that we get to do that every week. <laughs> there he goes. We've got to win a hell ride. All right, we just finished our ride. I'm getting a little bike lesson here. So, what, what have I done wrong? I'm just disgusted with the state of the uh, back end of the bike here. Look at this mud. <laughs> Have a look at that. Looks like it hasn't seen a wash in. <laughs> I was out in the dirt trails this morning though. Is that an excuse? Look at that wheel. The other side's even worse. Look at this. And then you have a look at this side. And I've just had breakfast off it. Look at that. To be fair though, I was riding on the dirt trails this morning. Is that is that an excuse or well, how long before how long were you home before this ride? Two hours? No. <laughs> Not an excuse. <laughs> Are you doing the crits this year? Just on camera? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I've got a chance of winning one. No, I'm not doing the I might not have a chance. Yeah, I was just thinking about that before when we were riding in, I was like, <laughs> oh if it's up to if we're in a small break, do I say Five grand and I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say anything afterwards. Sharing the prize money though, that's a thing, isn't it? Or giving the prize money, that happens a bit, doesn't it? No? Oh yeah, you, no, usually you do you that. Say you just, yeah, if you make, yeah, if someone helps you or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
how you going though? Because you've been a bit crook, haven't you? Bit yeah, I've been a bit. Sort of yeah. No, I, I, my intention is not to race till um, probably about the start of November, I don't reckon. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So, what do you, why is that? Just because you haven't had the base or? No, nah, because I've got to, it's going to be pretty intense watching through till the end of September watching Melbourne. Right, of course, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. No, no, I, I just, I'd like to, I love training and once the crits start, you don't really train much anymore, so I'd like to just kind of have a bit of a, usually I'd spend this time with you training, but I just haven't been able to because I've been crook and I just want to spend that kind of extra bit of time getting some longer riding in and kind of, I just love going for long rides and yeah. give a bit of passion for going out on on the two wheels again. So how much long riding do you think you need to do? Like for me, like it's mid-August, like what should I be doing now? Like, like if you want to hit the crit season hard in October. Like what what defines a long ride for you? What should, I don't know. You tell, well, normally like we call Arthur Seat the form finder. That's about 130k ride um, there and back. Is, is, that, is that long enough? Oh yeah, maybe on a tiny bit longer. For me, it's five hours. Five hours. Or four hours on the pedals, maybe. Right. How many times a week? Probably two. Two, two times mm. a week. For how long? I reckon. Before you start oh, building an effort, it's got to be six months, I reckon. Six Here months. In <laughs> <laughs> when the crits finish? Yeah, right. Yeah. No, no. Um, a couple of months. Yeah, probably a couple of months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No efforts at all. I reckon. Just going the long rides. No, no. You 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 do efforts, but yeah, the, a lot of people would say that you don't need a long ride, but you do. Yeah, there's ways around having a long ride, but if you want to be good for the whole season, I think you need to have a longer ride. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And when you do your longer ride, are you just pedaling? Yeah. yeah, I just like riding, I just, yeah. 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 If you don't do those longer rides, what's that going to do to your crit season? Yeah. Well, that's, that's, what, that's why I'd like to start a bit later, just so I can have a couple, because last year I didn't really do any. And you said you were sort of... Yeah, just, because if you race, if you race, if you race, if you race um, Sunday morning, and then Tuesday afternoon, and then you're kind of tired for the rest of the week. You don't really finish. You don't really fit a long ride in. Yeah. I wouldn't do it on a Saturday, and then just because I want to be at home or do whatever else, and then then you start wondering where you're going to get a long ride from. So I just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So been, wh when do you start building in your efforts, or do you do you not you just wait for crits and that's your Yeah. Effort? Usually just on a Saturday morning on the whole ride, I just try and smash it. You know, rather than just sitting in through the hills, I might try and go be at the front and swap off turns on the way down and on the way back or try and attack in the finish or do something. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Are they are they well timed? You know when you normally do efforts you do like a minute on and five minutes off or two minutes on, five minutes off. Like if you're doing them in a in a bunch ride like the hell ride, are you timing it or are you just no, doing no. it when you feel like it? No, you just try and go to the like say if you can slip away in Morty and you try and get to Black Rock, it's like eight Ks, so it's probably gonna be what, 11 minutes or something. Practice going up the front. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're going in a small group and going beyond your heart, you know, whatever your heart rate threshold is, going like real deep, like harder than race pace. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's what you start doing to build efforts into your training. Yeah. Doing that in the whole ride. Yeah. Right, interesting. What about during the week? During the week. You've got to, got to be motivated to do efforts and stuff. Right. I'll try and do, I'll do, I think I have to do some now because I haven't ridden for the whole winter, so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Interesting. You said to me before, even hell rides good, like just a just a finish, to practice yeah. your sprint finish. Yeah, you cop a bit of flack for saying that, I suppose, but all the uh, bogans in their utes will be out to get me. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seeing as they just tried to run us off the road a I minute know, ago. Yeah, I know. I didn't get um, the yeah, because it is because it's a race simulation. Like the whole point of the well, I don't know what the origins of the hell ride were. You know now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it was a it was a VFL training ride for. For, for Bernie Quinlan and a few yeah. few blokes around here. So with um, yeah, it's just like, and it's kind of evolved into a race simulation. You know, it's a practice race, really. Like, yeah. You stop at the red lights and all that, and you know, go as hard as you can up the hills, and you try and beat everyone that you're there with. It makes it, it's mimicking a race. Try and beat everyone to the finish. It's like yeah. we try and hurt everyone. That's what. It's kind of the exact same as a race, you know. The guys who can't sprint, they try and go really early, and yeah. the guys who can sprint try and wait till the sprint. Or even I know that when my sprint's not going so well, I'll consciously focus on trying to have a good finish in the into Black Rock here, coming really late and coming off the wheels. Yeah, right. Whereas if you're racing for a win, you might forget how to do that stuff. Or if you're always seemingly in breakaways and you're not contesting a bunch of sprint, yeah, then. Yeah. 
rather than uh, getting found out when you're trying to do it at the finish of a race, you can practice it on a Saturday morning. Yeah, okay. And if it doesn't work, you haven't invested or lost anything, so no. try when, it again. When, when do you normally come off the wheel? Yeah. Uh, it's about 170 to go. 170 to go. Which is probably pretty far for most people. Most people would probably wait till like 50 or 100 right. if they're good off the wheels. But, is yeah. that, the, and what would you do in a crit? Yeah, probably longer. Longer, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. But then like a fast sprinter would go like in the last 50 or 80 metres or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I can't do that though. So yeah. would you recommend like external to hell ride, like leading into the season, would you be doing, doing, doing other sort of, other stuff like that? In the quest for what? In, yeah, like in so the, like for you targeting to try and win a race? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So what sort of stuff would you recommend? Oh, I couldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, no, no, you want to... Well, it's, okay, well, how about I ask you this? Um, strengths or weaknesses? Like, if, if my, my weakness is my sprint, but my strength is, say, a 3 to 5 in effort, should I be focusing or training more on my strength or trying to build my weaknesses? Yeah, well, that, that, that's, that's a funny thing because it's... Um, I would say the focus on the strengths, absolutely, like, yeah, without okay. question, but I'm, I'm trying to get good. I'm trying to get better at golf. Yeah, and right. I, I'm really good with my irons, yeah. and so I just practice my irons all the time. And I'm terrible at putting and right. around the edge of the green, but I never practice it because I'm no good at it. Right. But golf, you need to work on your weaknesses. But bike riding, you need to just focus on your strengths. Really? Yeah. Well, but, but sprinting is such an integral part of crit, though. Like you're not you're not strong at crits. Oh, sorry, strong at sprints. Um, should you still not be? Popular? Well, yeah, yeah but yeah, that, that that can be the case. But a lot of guys who aren't good at sprinting still win a lot of crits. If you're no good at climbing, are you ever going to be able to train up to win a climbing race? Or do you just focus on a race that suits a guy that's a bit chunkier? Yeah, okay. What are you trying to say? That you're chunky? <laughs> Same as me. <laughs> Not as big as me though. But yeah, okay. That's how, that's how I see it. Yeah. I'm never, going to, I'm never going to be a skinny small guy. Like I've lost weight before to be better at climbing, but the only intention of that was to be able to make it over climbs to help the team or hopefully see a sprint finish that was on the other side of climbs. Yeah. But with my strength being sprint, what I sacrificed being able to get over climbs then takes away my winning attribute, which is the sprint. Yeah, okay. So, you know, you, 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 yeah, you have to focus on your strengths. That's yeah, all there is okay. to it, really. The three to five minutes, that's the power that you need to win any race. Yeah. I'm, you know, you could, you could be sure that all those sprinters in the world tour, that's their main target is working on those three to five minutes because that's where races are won. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's different for them because they, they're running to a finish will be at like probably 500 watts for four or five minutes. Yeah. And then they have to sprint after that. Well, I would, there'd be two ways. One is you you'd probably you wait till after Oliver's and then you go smash it up to Mount Eliza after that. Because right. that's probably what, that four minutes? So that's probably three and a half or four minutes from Humphreys Road to Mount Eliza Village. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's, there's one of them. Right. And then the next one would be is if people go away, you maybe try and make a move around the edgy hotel. Yeah, okay. Because you've got the hills there. Yeah. And okay. then you get a little bit of recovery down into Ricketts, and then from the bottom of Ricketts to the finish is two minutes. Yeah, okay. So then you just go again there, two minutes. Right, there you go. <laughs> Wouldn't, that, that's how I would figure it out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But then, so Glenvale, Sandown, and... South Melbourne or Port, Port Melbourne or South, South Melbourne. Like, what's your view on all three? Like, if you win, a, if you win at St Kilda, like, is that is that is there cred in that? For me, yeah. Or for, yeah. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Where would you put on the list out of those three? Third. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I, Aside from the Super Crit days, I've only, I think I've done it five times and I, I do, I've only not won it once, yeah. Yeah, okay. Maybe six times and only not won it once, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, it's too, it's too, I know it sounds stupid to say, but it's too, the Crit course is too flowing and too fast. Yeah. And you can bust your ass the whole day and then the bunch just find, catches you in the finish or, it's a little, I don't like the back, the back straight's a bit scary, like that sweeper in the yeah. left hand sweeper before the last corner like if you're on the left it pushes you to the right and if you're on the right you have to cut into the left yeah and like Glendale doesn't really ever have crashes and St Kilda seem to have quite a few yeah even in A grade yeah like you see people crash there and no, no one wants to crash so no yeah
So what about sand down in Glenville? And then you'd need a much far, it's nearly always a sprint at, sand, yeah. uh, at St Kilda, I would say. So, so it looks less, almost less suited yeah. to someone who's going to... Like you, yeah, yeah, you're never going to go away in the last two k's and stay away, I don't think. Yeah. That's the big thing, is that if you start a race, you want to try and get a result in every race. Otherwise, don't bother starting. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the, that's probably the first thing. Yeah. So how, yeah. Do, you, how do you keep that mindset personally? Oh, it just wears you out. <laughs> I'm tired of it. So, down in Glenbowl, like, what do you reckon? For you, reckon, for you. Would be better suited for Oh, probably, if you've got a good two or three minute power, then probably sand down, really, because right. if you're, um, if you go in a small group, there's, there's a lot more breakaways at sand down and they're more likely to stick. Yeah, okay. I don't know why, they didn't used to be, right. but they seem to stick and there's a lot of six man breakaways and seven rider breakaways and stuff. Yeah. I don't know if once people realise that the prize money's gone or whether they don't commit to trying to chase and you know the group just rolls around like I've got no idea what's going on but right. they get to the climb and they sprint up the climb and then they stop and freewheel and then that's it. Yeah. And when they do that like they maybe close back three seconds on the break but then as soon as they sit up they get another five seconds so yeah, okay. it's working the opposite way to what bringing a move back would be but the brake usually seems to rotate pretty well together there. Yeah, okay. And I reckon maybe, geez, probably close to 10 times the brake stayed last time. So if you're in a move of six, and then you just watch and mark everything that goes in the last two laps. Oh, it's only four minutes for a lap. Mm. No one attacks at the bell, they all attack at the back straight. There's a good opportunity there, depending on the wind especially. Yeah. Mm. And it's a pretty long, hard sprint, so it's probably not really a sprinter's sprint. It's a Grinding sprint. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Usually a headwind. Yeah. Yeah. What so it turns into about a 25 second sprint, but you've kind of raced to the corner there before it, so. It almost feels harder to race there, though. Like when I've raced Glenbow and Sandown, like to me, yeah. racing at Glenbow, uh, no. sorry, Sandown, just seems like a harder race at times. I don't know. Do you, do you find that? Or? Oh, yeah. The, when. With the when I'm when I'm strong and when I'm good, like sand down is much more suited to me because you can like the stronger guys usually win. But yeah, okay. the you can kind of hide in Glenvale, but you can't hide at sand down. Yeah, okay. does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can kind of, but because the sprinting is long and hard, you can't really. If you if you're down on your game, it doesn't really work. Does that makes sense. Tactics is definitely where the race wins come from. Yeah. Like, if the strongest guy in every race wins, then like probably Dave Kelly or Tom Leeper win all the races. Like, so how do you, how do you, because you can't really train tactics, you got to... Well, you can, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you how, can. Do you, how do you train tactics? Oh, I'm not telling. <laughs> yeah. Is it a hell ride thing as well? Is it, is it trying... No, you'd learn them on the hell ride, but you'd also learn them... The best is track. The best is if you can get on the track, like if you can... Yeah, okay. Because everyone's on the same gear, you've got to use and your... Thursdays are... Yeah, th Thursday, that's probably the perfect place to start, just yeah, to okay. outdoor track and Carnegie there. So why does that teach you good tactics for Chris? Beca because you're on the, you're all on the same gear. Well, you can't change gears in the sprint, so you have to time how you run at the wheels and how you come off the wheels and with enough time that if you can't keep pressure down to the finish line, someone's going to roll over the top of you. Like, it's all about timing how much you've got in your sprint. That's kind of the trick to it. Mm. Have you seen guys go down and do it and improve their trick racing significantly? Well, yeah, Nick Granger's one. He's probably, if he's not in A grade already, he'll be very close. Right. A lot of... Um, you know, he was probably D grade at the start of, you know, probably the start of last season, and then in B grade he's contesting every finish for the win, you know, so. Wow, that's yeah. a pretty good case study. Yeah, right. once everyone starts getting in the groove of the season at the end of the, you know, starts getting harder to win. It does, yeah. Yeah, the young guys have used their school easy. holidays to train full time, and. Is it definitely easier to win, like in the first couple of months, you reckon? Yeah. Oh, I don't think it's ever easy to win. Never easy to win, <laughs> probably the yeah. wrong choice. Is it, uh, it's probably a good year to be the start of the season going well because they a lot of people would use the Melbourne to Warrnambool as their first race. You know, yeah. you just naturally come in fit because you've got that race at the end of the year, so you're fit in October and then you just hold on. Roll through, yeah. Yeah, and other guys like really motivated and they come out at the start of the year and they're like, but then it kind of dies off by the time November comes around because eight weeks in and kind of haven't had a break or anything. Yeah, I couldn't tell you when there's been. There's never easy to win. Yeah. The easy to win ones would be when it's wet, but then there's other people who are good at cornering in the wet as well. So I wouldn't put easy and win in the same sentence ever. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Maybe Eddie Merckx or Sagan can say that, but I don't think anyone else in history has ever been able to say that. What else? I'm trying to think what else. Are you going to go in all aero stuff? Are you going to go 
aero jersey and those stupid socks and the aero helmet. I guess and... not. Got <laughs> 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 to make sure the glasses on the outside and the straps in the Yeah, I know. Even though some glasses look better on the inside of the straps, people disagree with that. <laughs> it's true though. All right, mate. Well, I'll see you around. Thanks for your um. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Enjoyed it. Now this video was brought to you by Tonelli. In case you didn't know, I'm wearing Tonelli. Are you wearing Tonelli? I'm wearing Tonelli as well. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And you, Tom, Tommy works for Tonelli. So if anyone wants any custom kits or just just some good kit anyway, yeah. How do they reach you? Oh, you can. I can't remember. <laughs> How do they reach you? Email. You gonna get that one out? No, of course not. That. No, I'll leave that one in there. <laughs> Yeah, tonelli.com.au. Yeah. It's in an inquiry or otherwise 1300 for Tonelli. Nice. Yeah. All right, mate. Cheers. Thanks for your time. No Appreciate it. Catch you out in the road. Hell ride. See me off the front. <laughs> are you going to Sorrento, are you? Oh, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure either. <laughs>